Hi everyone, today I'm going to cover the operation of an open-ended diesel pile hammer used for driving and the importance and methodology used to record the hammer ram stroke. So let's look at a brief video segment for the operation of a diesel pile hammer. My name is Casey Jones. I have professional registration in both engineering and geology and I've worked as a professional for over 36 years. I run my own consulting firm for deep foundation testing. Now this is what we're talking about, an open-ended diesel hammer. And these figures come from Kansas DOT's Bridge Construction Manual for Pile Driving. It's an excellent resource. I've got a link in the description to this video to this manual. So we can see here, this is a cutaway view of the ram, the, the, the piston that operates inside the housing for this hammer. Now this is the extension above the top of the hammer. So keep in mind that the ram has to travel usually a distance of around three and a half, four feet before it's exposed above the top of this extension on the housing. I've had people think that, oh, they see one foot of ram sticking out and it's a one foot stroke. No, that's actually more like four and a half feet. But at any rate, this end's open to the atmosphere. You have fuel injectors and air inlet ports down here. Now here's a view of the firing sequence. You start out by using a mechanical trip mechanism. It's lowered down on cables on the leads. It engages with the ram. It's hoisted up. Fresh air is brought into the, the chamber here. It's called the bounce chamber. Then it releases the top of its position. It trips the mechanism. The ram free falls, compresses the air and fuel and explodes, which imparts a force to the anvil, which is connected to the helmet, which rests on the top of the hammer. So according to Newton, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So you have a downward operating force imparted to the pile, and the opposite reaction is the ram is flung upwards inside the cylinder for the hammer. And it'll continue to travel until the velocity reaches zero, at which point that's the maximum height of the ram and then it free falls and repeats the process. For a typical hammer operation, you get a blow roughly every second. Now here's a video of the mechanical trip for the hammer ram. We did this on a job where it was pre-bored to limestone rock and the pile was set in the hole and it was hard limestone. And we were concerned that uh, if the hammer were operated under fuel, it could lead to an unsafe situation where the hammer ram would fly up too high and actually run the risk of uh, not only damaging the pile but having the ram blow out through the housing of the hammer. So we were very careful. We just did manual trips and actually did the PDA that way and got our required capacity without actually running the hammer under fuel. So I mentioned it's important to accurately measure the hammer ram stroke. And why is that? Well, if we do dynamic pile testing, We'll determine a capacity, let's say, at end of initial drive at some depth for this given pile, and we'll correlate that with a stroke that's recorded in the PDA computer. The PDA has an internal clock and a timer, and through a use of a formula, it's able to calculate the stroke on a blow-by-blow -blow basis. So typically, for recommended driving criteria, to get a given capacity, we'll recommend a minimum hammer ram stroke and a maximum pile set. Now, pile set is the penetration of the pile after some consecutive number of blows. So typically, you measure the pile set or the permanent displacement as it's being driven over, say, five consecutive blows. So let's say an inch and five blows. That would be a set value. And then we measure the hammer ram stroke. And then when they go to install other piling that doesn't have PDA, they can get roughly an idea is the hammer operating under the same energy is the pile providing a similar resistance to what was provided for the test pile. Now there's also instances where someone will model pile driving in the verification using wave equation analysis, and that's just a computer program. I have a video about that if you want to check it out. But essentially you get a relationship between hammer ram stroke and pile set for a given set capacity. And so in that way you can verify whether you've achieved required capacity for the pile that you've driven. Now, another handy way to compute the stroke is to use a formula. And again, this comes out of the KDOT construction manual for bridge foundations. So what you do is you record the time for 10 consecutive blows of the hammer ram, 
and you square that value, so that value in seconds squared times 0 0.04 will give you the stroke in feet. So this is important to do as you're driving the pile. You certainly don't want to get onto hard rock and then say, well, let's hit it 10 times to figure out what the stroke is because you could overstress the pile in that scenario and, and could lead to pile damage. So this is something you should be doing on an ongoing basis as the pile is being driven. And of course, it's actually possible to time it for a shorter period of time and apply a correction. So here's an example of a pile that we tested recently uh, doing PDA testing. And uh, I'll just let the video play for a second. So to show you the use of this formula, I brought this video segment into my video editor and I could see on the audio track exactly when a blow occurred. So you want to start your timer on a blow and then stop the timer after 10 blows from the time you started. So in this case, uh, we had 13.18 seconds for 10 consecutive blows. So 13.18 squared times 0.04. 6.95. So just by listening to the time between blows and recording that, we're able to calculate the stroke. So as I mentioned, we did PDA. Let's see what the PDA showed for this same pile. And you can see this video was from the very beginning of the drive. At the beginning of the drive, we had a stroke of 6.95 feet, exactly what we computed using the formula. Now, there are certainly other ways to measure hammer ram stroke. One is to use a saxometer. It's a little handheld device that looks like a calculator that's manufactured by Pile Dynamics. Last time I bought one of these, it was around $2,500, so they're not cheap. Nowadays, too, there's software available for download that you, that you can run on your phone or tablet. Essentially, uh, both a saxometer and your phone or tablet is going to use the internal microphone and an algorithm to sort out the time between blows and, and use this formula to compute the stroke. Now, I think it's important to mention a few safety tips here. First of all, you don't want to stand in the line of fall as the hammer or pile is being lifted into place. Also, it's not a good idea to stand directly underneath the hammer while it's being operated. I've seen three inch long steel bolts uh, come loose from the leads and fall down and land two feet away from me and, and be four inches into the ground uh, after impact. So it's better just to stay away uh, I like to stand upwind of the diesel exhaust plume. There's no point in breathing all that stuff in. And again, don't be robotically committed to measuring the stroke over a certain number of blows because you may be in a situation where you're overstressing the pile. So again, you got to use judgment and you may have to more accurately time the number of blows after fewer than 10 blows just to compute the, the stroke on the equivalent basis. And again, you wanna be careful operating the hammer if you've got short pile to hard rock. Either start out with no fuel or the lowest fuel setting and make sure the crew is prepared to shut the hammer off very quickly. Another way to measure the stroke is to use a reference board marked in feet at the top of the hammer. Your eyeball can line the top of the ram up with a marking on the board. I just wanted this to be a really practical video for people who are out in the field. Uh, seems the, nowadays we're getting turnover of experienced people who are retiring and moving on to other things and new people entering the field, which is exciting. Uh, but I had one time an inspector come up to me after I mentioned, after doing the PDA, what we needed for set and stroke. And he's like, what's set and stroke? So it gave me the idea to start doing some of these videos to put the word out and act as a resource. Most DOTs have forms for their inspectors to fill out while the pile is being driven for its full length. So they'll record the depth interval, uh, the number of blows, and they'll compute the stroke and enter it in a field form. Sometimes they transfer this data into electronic forms as well. But it's a very good means of documenting how the pile installation is going on the project. So again, if you have any questions, uh, please contact me. My email is in the description to this video. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please hit those like, subscribe, and notification buttons. And please stay tuned for future videos. Thanks very much.